Hello everyone, I'm Larry, a professor of accounting, and in this brief video I'd like to provide a simple qualitative explanation of the concept of activity-based costing, also known as ABC for short. Before we look at a specific example of activity-based costing, let's first look at some simple, straightforward ways that we might allocate, apportion, or assign some common overhead costs across multiple departments or portions of an organization. In this sketch, we have a simple but fictitious example of a medical building. This medical building contains two separate offices. Office A is gastroenterology, and there are three gastroenterologists in that practice. Office B is ophthalmology, and ophthalmology has seven doctors in that practice. These two offices have separate and distinct costs that they each pay for on their own. But it turns out that within this medical building, there are $1 million worth of common or shared overhead expenses that are shared between Office A and Office B. These $1 million in shared expenses are covering the people and facilities for administrative support that supports both Office A and Office B, billing support, information technology support, and also maintenance. And again, both Office A and Office B are benefited from these services. So what we want to do is appropriately allocate or apportion this common or shared million dollars worth of overhead expense to both Office A and Office B, the two tenants of this entire medical building. What's one way to do that? Some people would say, let's just do it the simplest way. We'll take the $1 million in common shared expenses, split the bill down the middle. $500,000 will be allocated or charged to Office A, and the other $500,000 will be allocated or charged to Office B. And that's certainly one way of doing it, and everyone might be okay with that. Or someone else might recommend that we apportion or allocate this million dollars in annual shared costs based on the number of doctors that are supported in both of these offices. So since Office A has three out of the 10 doctors total within the building, and Office B has seven out of the 10 doctors total within the building, Office A will receive three out of 10 or 30% of the allocation of the million dollars, that's $300,000, and Office B will receive the other $700,000 allocated to it for its expenses. Someone else might even suggest that instead of using the number of doctors in each of these two offices to apportion the million dollars in shared expenses, that maybe we should instead use the number of patient visits to Office A and Office B. That if we know the number of patient visits to Office A and Office B, we add them together into the total, and the percentage of visits for Office A will be used as the percentage to allocate how much of this $1 million Office A will pay. And Office B will accordingly pay out of this million dollars based on its percentage of office visits to this building. There are a variety of direct, straightforward ways such as this that we can use for allocating these common expenses to both of these tenants. However, if we want to investigate and analyze further, we could dig deeper and look at each of these expenses and try to figure out who exactly is causing the expenses to be generated and apportion them accordingly. That's where we get into activity-based costing, or ABC, and we'll show you an example of how that's done. So next, Let's look at how to implement activity-based costing. What's the point of ABC? It can provide an organization with a different, perhaps a smarter way of allocating or apportioning some or all of its overhead costs across its various product lines or services. And you'll see in a moment 
that we're going to look at the overhead costs of an organization and we'll break them out or group them into what are called cost pools. And we'll take those cost pools and allocate them to the cost objectives, which are the different product lines, service areas, or departments within the organization. And here's a picture of that concept. What does ABC accomplish? Well, we take our organization's total overhead costs, we analyze them, break them down into various areas or cost pools such as maintenance or security, or in this case, we've listed cost pools that we call inspections, machine setups, packaging, as well as maintenance. We know the dollar value that goes into each of these cost pools, and ABC will help us take the value in each of these cost pools and allocate them to the cost objectives, that is the appropriate product lines, service areas, or departments within our organization. So let's take a look at an example of ABC using this sketch. This again is a fictitious hypothetical company. This is a toy company. And this toy company is comprised of five different product lines, each with its own production supervisor. There is a Frisbee product line within the company, a yo-yo product line, hula hoop product line, rubber ball product line, and a board game area where we produce board games in this company. Now, what we do first as part of the ABC process is to look at the overall overhead expenses, split them out, or group them into different cost pools such as maintenance or security. And in this case, we're showing just one cost pool that we've investigated. We're calling it machine checks and inspections. That's a name that we have given to this cost pool. We found that $20,000 over the past year was spent in our organization for this cost pool called machine checks and inspections. And what we're going to try to do with ABC is to figure out which of these product lines caused this $20,000 in cost to be generated. So what we're going to do once we've identified this cost pool is to figure out what is the activity or cost driver, the thing that caused this $20,000 cost pool to be generated. In this case, our investigation showed that 200 calibration adjustments that were accomplished this past year in our factory are what caused this $20,000 cost pool to be spent. That's the activity or cost driver, the calibration adjustments, that created this expense. So next, we'll do a quick calculation where we say the $20,000 in total cost pool divided by the 200 calibration adjustments that is the activity or cost driver that created this expense the twenty thousand dollars divided by the 200 calibration adjustments equals one hundred dollars per adjustment that's the unit cost every time an adjustment was performed in this factory it cost us one hundred dollars so now what we need to do is figure out who among the product lines caused this $20,000 to be expensed due to these activities. Well, we found out that the Frisbee product line had 40 adjustments done this year to support it. 40 adjustments at $100 per adjustment, that's $4,000. Again, K stands for 1,000. 4,000 out of the $20,000 cost pool. $4,000 will be allocated or apportioned to the Frisbee product line. The Yo-Yo product line had 50 adjustments done. It had $100 per adjustment. That comes to $5,000 that will be apportioned or attributed or allocated to the Yo-Yo product line. Take a look at the Hula Hoop product line. How many adjustments did they require? None. So nothing zero dollars is apportioned or attributed to the hula hoop product line the rubber ball product line required 10 adjustments to be done this year at 100 dollars per adjustment 
That's $1,000 worth of the $20,000 cost pool will be allocated or attributed to the rubber ball product line. And finally, take a look at the board game product line. They required the most adjustments to be done. They caused most of this $20,000 to be generated on their own. At 100 adjustments, $100 per adjustment, the board game product line created $10,000 worth of cost in this cost pool. So $10,000 is allocated or attributed or apportioned to the board game product line. If we add up all these allocations, they add up to the total cost pool of $20,000, but notice nothing, zero dollars, was allocated or attributed to the hula hoop product line, and justifiably so. They caused none of this cost to be created, whereas $10,000 was allocated or attributed to the board game product line because of the adjustments that they required, and that was the activity or cost driver that they required, and they created much of this cost pool. So what is activity-based costing doing? It works through this process from identifying cost pools all the way through to identifying the cost objectives. Each cost pool is ideally allocated to the appropriate cost objectives, which are the product lines or service areas or departments within the larger organization. So what are the potential benefits of ABC? For some of our overhead expenses, we'll find out where this money is going, who and what is causing the expense. That can also help us calculate more accurate product costs for each of our product lines and then appropriately price our products. And when people know that they are being watched or they're being watched as to where they spend money in an organization, that closer scrutiny of expenditures might lead to better stewardship of our organization's resources. When people are watched and they know expenses are being watched, maybe we'll save some money. Finally, what is the downside of ABC? It's simply that additional effort and expense required to investigate and analyze the cost pools and cost drivers so we can properly allocate them to the cost objectives, which are the different product or service or department areas within the company. So ABC is probably suitable in some situations, but not worth doing in others. There are many ways that ABC problems can be posed on an exam or a homework assignment. Hopefully this brief discussion will give you the foundation to understand activity-based costing so that you can do a good, efficient job when you see those kind of calculations on a test. Good luck on your studying, and I hope that helps.